Hello everyone, my name is Quackney, and I'm here to ask and answer one question. Can you beat Fallout 4 as Grognak the Barbarian? Grognak the Barbarian is a comic book character within lore of several of the Fallout games. His comics can be found for permanent upgrades throughout the series. Fallout 4 goes a step further by having the most issues of the comic in one game and having Grognak's axe and costume available for the player to find. So, in this run, I will be role-playing as Grognak. Well, the best I can at least. Fallout 4 doesn't have much in the way of role-playing, with its dialogue system being significantly downgraded from its predecessors. On top of that, these comics don't actually exist, so how Grognak would act is kind of up in the air. But he is a parody of Conan, He-Man, and other similar characters, so we can just go off of that. Hit things, be kind of dumb, and fight for justice, glory, all that. Now, let's explain the rules of the run. I can only use Grognak's axe. I must have Grognak's costume equipped at all times. And as an additional challenge given to me by a viewer named Yamazi, I must collect all 10 different issues of Grognak the Barbarian. Some other additional information, I will be playing on the normal difficulty of the PC version of Fallout 4 with all DLCs and no mods. I also streamed most of this playthrough right here on YouTube, and don't worry, my ugly mug won't be there the whole video. With the rules established, let's get on with the run. First things first, we have to look the part. Grognak has long flowing blonde hair and has washboard abs. And as it turns out, there's a character preset that basically looks just like him. Easy enough. On the kitchen counter is Grognak issue 3, Jungle of the Bad Babies, but we can't pick it up just yet. vault -Tec arrives at our door and we happily accept our spot in the nearby Vault 111, but surely we won't be needing it. I name myself appropriately and go with the following special stats. 9 Strength. 1 Perception, 3 Endurance, 1 Charisma, 4 Intelligence, 5 Agility, and 5 Luck. 1 Intelligence probably would have been more lore accurate, but I need to open an advanced lock or hack an advanced computer to get the axe, and I'd rather take the extra XP gains from a slightly higher intelligence score. On top of that, there's no low intelligence dialogue options in this game, so it doesn't matter. I play with my ugliest sin baby, but only because I have to. The man on the TV says that the world is ending. Anyway, my wife grabs our potato baby and we make our way to our newly secured place inside the vault. We arrive at the vault just in time to still have our eyes melt out of our sockets from the blast. I assert my dominance over this guy by cutting in line. I then put on my vault suit and hop into this pod without asking any questions. I probably should have asked a couple questions. I wake up from my beauty sleep to witness my child being stolen and my wife being shot. Anyway, once I get out of the pod myself, I make sure to take my wife's wedding ring as I can sell it for caps. I also can't kill these rat roaches as I don't have Grognak's axe, so I have to lock them behind doors to get by. You know, I've never actually come back and got the cryolator, which makes me wonder, but that's another video. Eventually, I arrive at the end of the vault and put on my pit boy. I then come out into the wasteland for the first time and make my way to Sanctuary. I talk to Cosworth, but I keep it short because I need to level up before I can do anything. First, I go back to my house and collect issue 3 of Grognak the Barbarian. Then I start scrapping everything I can inside of Sanctuary. When I find the I'm Special book, I take one more point of agility. To level up, I craft a bunch of fences. I use this level up to take the first level in the hacker perk, and now I begin my long, naked trek to Huber's Comics. Believe it or not, these super mutants were the only thing I came across. Finally, I make it to Huber's Comics. I hack the terminal to disengage the lock, run around the counter to juke the ghouls, grab the axe, and run out the building. Unfortunately, they followed me. Eventually, I am able to break away from them and equip the axe, and this right here is one of the reasons this weapon is so good. The AP cost in VATS is incredibly low, allowing me to take several enemies at once with ease. Once back inside, I make my way up several floors, taking out a small army of ghouls in the process. The Silver Shroud also has a costume and a unique weapon, but that's another video. And there's the costume. Finally, we are complete. On my way out is when Yamazi suggests I collect all the Grognak comics. I go back to the beginning and finally start my playthrough, Finding Dogmeat. 
I help him kill a couple mole rats before telling him to go stay at Sanctuary. Typically in these challenge runs I don't use companions, but we'll see him again later. Helping out Preston is easy enough as most of these raiders die in one or two hits. Once all the raiders inside are taken care of, we make our first introductions and Preston tells me there's a suit of power armor on the roof to take out the rest. I enter the power armor and take the minigun, but only because I have to to progress the quest. I immediately jump out of the suit and get back to chopping. The Deathclaw fight was easy enough, though he would kill me in one hit if I wasn't being careful. And then this happened. All of this just works. Back inside, I talked to Preston for the second and last time. Thank God. I'll think about it. But before leaving, Mama Murphy goes on a jet fueled rant about a premonition or something. I find a traveling merchant and sell a couple things of no real importance. I help out Trudy by planting my axe in Wolfgang and Simon. At this point I realize I'm not really being true to the character by wearing helmets, so I forbid them for the rest of the run and let my golden locks flow in the wind. Arriving at the Cambridge police station I find it under siege by ghouls, so I lend a helping hand. Afterwards I meet Paladin Dance and agree to help him with a few things. First being securing a deep range transmitter at the Archjet facility. A facility that happens to be filled with synths. I've never used the junk jet either, but I guess that's another video. Later on I press this button knowing full well the consequences. And I make a barbecue out of a bunch of synths. And also Paladin is. Who sadly survives because of his literal and figurative plot armor. I chop up some more synths and find the deep range transmitter and one of their corpses. After all that I make my way to Diamond City where Piper's having a hard time getting in because she went and pissed off the mayor. She comes up with a not so clever lie that I go along with and we get the doors open. We are then immediately greeted by said mayor, and he's actually quite nice and offers to help me might I need it. I tell him I'm looking for my son and he rescinds his offer. Turns out he's actually a cuck. Offended, I return to the police station. I ask Paladin Dance for more work and he tells me to help out Scribe Halen and Scribe Reese first. I collect a flux sensor for Scribe Halen and clear out a train yard for Scribe Reese. I then return to them both to report my success. Dance then tells me about a recon team that went missing about three years ago and he wants me to see if I can find them. It's only been three years with no contacts. What's the worst that could have happened? Night Varum is dead. Night Aslan is dead. Scribe Ferris is dead. I don't know what's happening here, but it upsets me. Eventually, I find Paladin Brandis, who is not dead, but he might as well be because now he's crazy and doesn't want to leave the hole he's been living in. I show Paladin Dance my findings and he thanks me for my service, but has nothing more for me to do. So I return to Diamond City, and I'm struck with jealousy as I witness a man get treated to my dream make-a-wish. However, I would have rather John Cena pull the trigger, not a random guard, but to each their own. I can't stall any longer, so I talk to Piper about my missing child, and she points me to a detective named Nick Valentine. At Nick's office, his partner Ellie Perkins tells me that Nick has got himself mixed up with some bad guy named Skinny Malone, and has gone missing. So now I have to find Nick so that he can then find my son. And then I ran into Swan, so I did the only reasonable thing. I drank some whiskey, did a bunch of drugs, and chopped him up. I enter the Park Street Station and find it's full of triggermen, so I do what I do best. Then I find Vault 114. Using my Pit Boy, I'm able to open it up and continue on my search for Nick. This does beg the question, however how exactly did Skinny Malone and the triggermen access the vault if none of them have a Pit Boy? Anyway, uh, 
When I find Nick, he tells me that he was investigating a missing person, who turns out to be Skinny Malone's new flame. I guess she'll just stay missing. On our way out, Nick suffers a blue screen of death and walks into a wall. But I give him a hard reboot and he's all better now. Back at his office, Nick recognizes my son's kidnapper as Kellogg and happens to know where he lives. I get the key to his house from the mayor's receptionist and let myself in. A secret button reveals Kellogg's hidden gooning room. Told you we would see dog meat again. I give him a whiff of Kellogg's goon juice and he begins to lead me right to him. Finally, our trail leads us to Fort Hagen. Inside, I kill a bunch of synths. And when I find Kellogg, he approaches with his hands up, so I take the opportunity to plant my axe in his head. The hole in his head reveals a piece of his brain, so I take it as a trophy. Leaving Fort Hagen, I see the Brotherhood showing off their new ride, the Pridwin. They say they come in peace and mean no harm, but everyone nearby is now dead, and this time, it wasn't me. Pretty sus. I return to Nick, and he tells me we can go to Good Neighbor and read the memories on Kylog's brain piece. Inside Good Neighbor, I hit up Dr. Amari at the memory den and inquire about reading Kellogg's brain. She hooks Nick and I up to a machine, and it's time for everyone's favorite part of the game. I'm just kidding, this part of the game sucks, so I'll just skip it. Turns out Kellogg had a troubled life, and a synth named X688 teleports to the Institute with Sean. Amari can't help us get into the Institute, but a rogue scientist named Virgil might. Unfortunately, he's in the Glowing Sea, a massive irradiated wasteland where the atomic bomb fell. Almost immediately, I find a Deathclaw and I'm able to take it out with ease. This and one other Deathclaw were the only things I encountered. I also clipped through this road and got stuck. Outside Virgil's cave, I fight another Deathclaw, which gives me a case of deja vu. All of this just works. Then I finally meet Virgil, who turns out to be a super mutant. I give him a rundown of my situation and he tells me I need a chip from an elite institution synth called a Corsair. In exchange for his help, when I make it to the institution I have to find an experimental serum that might reverse his mutation. I find a Corsair named C247 who's hunting down escaped synths. I ask him nicely for the Corsair chip in his brain and he's happy to give it to me. Back to Dr. Amari who, again, says she can't help me but tells me that the Railroad might be able to. The Railroad is a very secretive organization. Finding them involves solving a complex puzzle to decode a mysterious password that has never been cracked before. It's Railroad. The password is Railroad. Once inside, I meet Desdemona, the leader of the Railroad. She introduces me to Tinker Tom, who's able to reverse engineer the Corsair chip. Returning to Virgil, he's able to make some schematics for a teleporter so that we can infiltrate the Institute, but I'll need the Railroad's help constructing it. In order to get their help though, Desdemona tells me I need to run an operation with Deacon first to earn their trust. The operation was easy enough. We met up with an informant, and then went into the sewer, killed a bunch of synths, and at the end we found Tommy Whispers, who was dead, and found Carrington's prototype, which looks like some kind of stealth boy. Back at the Railroad, I decide that this will be the faction I side with for the end of the game. Being a barbarian, my brain is too oonga-boonga to feel comfortable with all the technology the Institute and the Brotherhood have. Also, they're both kind of dicks. I go over the plans with Tinker Tom and head off to go build them. Signal interceptor up, I can now finally enter the Institute. Desdemona tells me about someone on the inside they know of that helps since escape to the wasteland, named Patriot. She then gives me a holotape that I can use to contact them and get their help to take the Institute down from the inside. But before I do that, I figured it's time to get all those comic books, starting with issue 1, Blood on the Harp, located here in the Wicked Shipping Fleet Lockup. Issue 2, Come at the Trickster, slightly north of Andrew Station.
I already have issue 3, so next is issue 4, in the bosom of the Corsair Queen inside Corvega assembly plant. Issue 5, Demon Slaves, Demon Sands can be found in two places, Vault 75 or Vault 81. I found mine in Vault 75. Issue 6, Enter Maula, War Maiden of Mars, found here next to Swan's Pond. Issue 7, Fatherless Kerr in this shack on Mass Pike Interchange. Issue 8, Lost in the Snow of Lust inside Backstreet Apparel. Issue 9, In the Lair of the Virgin Eater at Hyde Park. And the last issue, issue number 10, What Sorcery is This inside the Museum of Witchcraft. I do have to fight the Deathclaw inside to get it, but he offers no real threat to me. Yes. Comics collected, it's time to go to the Institute. Inside, a man named Father greets me over the speakers and tells me the Institute is not so bad. I find my son, but he doesn't recognize me, and then Father turns him off, revealing he is a synth. Father then tells me that he is in fact my son, all grown up and the leader of the Institute. He wants me to join them and tells me to go meet the four division heads. Before doing that, I insert the holotape Desdemona gave me and upload a message to Patriot who replies instantly and tells me where to meet him. I meet up with him and learn his name is actually Liam. He then takes me to meet a fellow member of the resistance, Matthew Mercer. Liam explains that in order to move forward with their plans, they need an old username and password to infiltrate the Institute's security systems. But Father won't let me leave the Institute yet, so I need to meet the Division Heads first. Meet and greet's over with, Father then asks for my help with a rogue synth that now runs a group of raiders and is being a not so nice guy. He finally gives me access to come and go from the Institute as I please, once I agree. I head to the Cambridge Polymer Labs and meet Molly, who offers me a job. Molly gives me a brief seminar introducing me to my new line of work, but I don't really pay attention. After she lets me in, she tells me that the last people who worked here couldn't finish the job, and now I can't leave until I do it myself. I take out my frustration on the slackers who got me stuck here. I also unlock the ability to project my attacks at great distance. All of this just works. Finally, I find a terminal with the login and password I need, and I'm able to override the facility's defense system so that I can leave. I hope Molly forgives me. She did not. At the railroad again, Desdemona tells me to continue working undercover at the Institute until the time is right to take them down. I tell Matthew Mercer the railroad will fight alongside him, but he's too busy touching grass. I give Liam his password and username and then go back to Matthew Mercer who's finishing up his grass fondling. He then tells me that in order to arm themselves, the synths are going to fake a mining accident and they need me to take out the guards. Just like everything else in this run so far, the synths put up no challenge, and I chop them up. Now it's time to help out Father. I'm supposed to help X6 here take out that runaway synth, but he keeps picking a fight with everything in sight, and I can't talk to him while he's in combat. After some time, I'm able to talk to him and actually start the quest. Before our confrontation, X6 tells me to use a code to disable our target. It works like a charm, I take out his men, and X6 takes him back to the Institute. Father is happy with the results and tells me about his plans to attack the escaped synth hideout, Bunker Hill. And of course, I am to help him. I quickly warn the railroad so that they are not caught off guard. Then I go to Bunker Hill to meet up with X418, who I immediately betray. I meet up with Father afterwards, and he's suspicious that the attack on Bunker Hill failed, but he still invites me to a chair meeting at the Institute anyway. I find a bunch of people here and realize I misunderstood what a chair meeting was. Father is dying of cancer. Anyway, he then names me as his successor. Man, this guy is dumb. Allie then asks for my help getting a reactor up and running for the institution, but for that, we need a beryllium agitator. Teleporting to Mass Fusion makes the Brotherhood my permanent enemy. Oh well. Once inside, I have to go down an elevator while I get shot at by the Brotherhood. I don't have a gun, so I just take it on the chin. Not so happy you insisted to come along now, are you, Allie? Once inside, I kill some people. We go down another elevator. And like a good father, I want to relate to my child, so I give myself cancer while grabbing the beryllium agitator. I leave the facility and meet back up with Allie at the Institute. 
Father tells me we need to destroy all the Institute's enemies and reassures me that they are, in fact, not the bad guys. When I go to get Virgil's serum, I found that Dr. Higgs and Dr. Locken have locked themselves inside Bioscience to protest my position in the Institute. Dr. Newton shows me how to get past our security by going through an abandoned facility, and while I'm doing that, I find Virgil's serum. After killing their synth guards, the doctors come to their senses and surrender. I return to Virgil and give him his serum, which he then injects into himself. He tells me to come back in a week to see if it works, but I don't do that. Helping out Father again, I go to Grey Garden Homestead and convince T.S. Wallace to join the Institute because he's good at doing a science. With his help, the Institute's reactor is finished, giving them... Father is quite pleased with this and tells me to attend the next chair meeting as the new head of the Institute without him. The chair then decides it's now time to kill the Institute's enemies, some of which are my friends. But before I don't do that, Matthew Mercer tells me that the Brotherhood has found out about the location of the railroad, which is a surprise to me because it was so well hidden. I race to the railroad to warn them, just in time to help fight off the invading Brotherhood soldiers. Oh well. With the railroad defended, it's time to take on the Brotherhood. First things first, I need to steal a vertebird. I meet Tinker Tom outside Cambridge Police Station and get to work. I ran into a slight problem where the only enemy left was a vertebird, and as you can imagine, I had some difficulty reaching them with my axe. I basically had to rely on Deacon to shoot it down while I stood out in the open getting shot. At some point though, I noticed that Deacon wasn't shooting at the vertebird anymore. That's when I noticed that he had left the police station and was now getting thrown around by a Deathclaw. I take out the Deathclaw, and then Deacon runs away to fight some other enemies nearby. But eventually, he manages to shoot down the vertebird. I get on board our own vertebird and we make our way to the Pridwin. When we get there, Deacon gives me a Brotherhood outfit to sneak in, but that's not my style, so I take a bunch of drugs and get to chopping. I plant three bombs. And then I take out Elder Maxon. I return to the Vertebrate and we take off. Fortunately for the Brotherhood on the ground, I can't use this minigun. And fortunately for us, they have the aim of a Stormtrooper. The Pridwin goes down in flames and with that, the Brotherhood are no more. Next is the Institute, so I return to Matthew Mercer and tell him it's time. I kill a few guards and take over the relay controls. Afterwards, Matthew Mercer casts Teleportation Circle and brings in the railroad. Desdemona gives me a bomb. I find Father and he's dying. Anyway, I use his computer to open up the way to the reactor. I plant the bomb on the reactor and I get teleported to safety. Synth Sean asks to come with me and just like all the other synths, he deserves freedom. So, I take him with me. And then I press this button, blowing up the reactor, destroying the Institute. And with that, the game is over, and I can finally answer the question. Can you beat Fallout 4 as Grognak the Barbarian? Yes. Yes you can. Despite not being able to mod both Gragnok's axe and clothes, they make quite the strong duo. Gragnok's axe has decent damage, but the bleed effect and the low AP cost make it more viable. Coupled with Gragnox's costume giving a 25% increase to melee damage, I felt quite strong the whole run. I was low on armor for most of the run, seeing as how I could only equip arms and legs, but I basically didn't change my gear after the first couple of hours because of the legendary effects I got on them. I just took the toughness and medic perks to give me more survivability. I'll show my perk screen at the end of the video. Another note, this game has crazy long loading screens, and I even have the game on an SSD. My save game clocked this run at 12 hours and 43 minutes, but Steam clocked my time at 15 hours and 20 minutes, meaning I sat on a loading screen for over 3 hours. 
Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe, leave a comment below for what challenge run you want to see next. And with that, I'll see you next time.